everybody, and welcome to round three of the GT Planet Fantasy Series 2016 season, the MAV TV 350. Here in the two mile oval of Auto Club Speedway, you saw your pole sitter there, RCB929, looking to turn his season around after a poor two races. And of course, it's very early, and he can still turn it around, even if it doesn't work today. Well, you see, but first, Aside from RCB on the pole, you notice Jordan was first in practice, second in qualifying, and 11th in happy hour. He has the most consistency making his way into this event. Look out for him to probably be faster than RCB in that 12 car. Uh, on the inside, of course, Jordan in the GT Planet car. On the outside row there, you see the cars firing up, and we're getting ready to roll off for what is one of the longer races in the season. Quite a few of these races right off the bat are long. Of course, the Daytona 400 being very long. We've got Watkins Glen being a road course. It's a shorter distance, but a decently long uh, time to take. And then 350 miles here. Uh, these cars are slowed down not a whole lot. They'll still be hitting probably 200 or close to it, but they uh, are flirting with mostly the 190 range because you'll notice that front stretch and most of the back stretch does not have safer barriers. The drivers were okay with a slight reduction in speeds, and the green flag flies, and we're gonna, and that was obviously done to keep things a little bit safer, because uh, going 214 miles an hour just does not appeal to a lot of our drivers here, especially when they're doing what they're doing right there, three and four wide right off the bat. We're gonna see that a lot on the restarts. SBX dives down to the bottom. Trying to make a move. You see the B-Man there getting swamped in the middle. So many different lanes work here. And that's why a lot of drivers enjoy this racetrack. And we're going to be seeing a lot of juking and jacking for position really early. And at the early stages of every run, every restart. Because it's about the only time they're going to be four wide, five wide like this. And you can see how much those lines are changing around. And how they're working for different drivers. This is one of the most dynamic tracks on the schedule. And a lot of these drivers love it, and a lot of these drivers hate it. Uh, a lot of the people who like to run different lines enjoy the track. A lot of people who run the same line all the time don't really like it that much. You see how the closure rates are different. It's absolutely insane how different things work for different people and how just different drivers make different things work. See right here, CUNY Kenosha on a three-race probation following her actions at Watkins Glen. Trying to keep the nose clean at this point. Looking at NASCAR Fan 1400 from Smurfy Bug. NASCAR Fan had a poor race two after winning the Daytona 400. Looking to rebound as he's still top 10 in points entering this race. Smurfy Bug second place in the rookie battle to SBX right now. Speaking of SBX, he'd pull out a lead right there. You see Davis in the 46 right behind. Those two uh, Hondas leading the field. And then Race Car and then Red Dragon. And then Jordan, that's the top five at lap nine's completion. You see the rest of the field going by. Nobody having any issues so far here, but it does look like Honda and Toyota really starting to take charge early on here. See, there's Davis there in his second ever start. Um, still without sponsorship, though. See, now race car and the Speed TV car diving to the bottom. And then, of course, SVX kind of, you see how quickly things just change here. It's ridiculous how quickly things change, but in a good way. See, race car, not only does he take the lead, but he extends a, almost a second gap in a couple of laps. First issue of the day would come for Gran Turismo 916, making an unscheduled pit stop. Remember, Goodyear was not guaranteed this race at the beginning of the season. First two races went well, and here they are now. Of course, next weekend... At Texas, it'll be Michelin that are providing the tire there. So Goodyear giving an issue to the number 60 car. Here you see the field talking about how the Hondas were dominating. Now it's time for that TRD power to go to the front because those are teammates 1-2 and then two more teammates 3-4. Wouldn't take long, though, for the 31 to fall off the pace of the Cybertron with SVX and Davis and the Hondas just swamping that Toyota. Now we're looking at that number 67 of Red Dragon. She's running well, looking to win her first event in the GT Planet Fantasy Series as she's checking up behind that 60 car. Now, Grand Turismo 916, not really off the pace much. It was a tire issue, so I mean, he's 
a couple laps down, but you know, he's still in the hunt. See the gap from first to second is huge, and we've got 30 laps caution free, which is pretty good. Uh, again, here's race car luck turning around for him for the time being. Wouldn't take too much longer though before maybe he used up all his stuff because SVX came screaming up and uh, would get up alongside the 32 or at least try to. There he gets up alongside the 32 trying to make a pass for the lead. Now catching a driver is one thing, passing him is another thing. Uh, but it looks like race car did use up most of his stuff there pulling out that gap. SVX conserved a little bit and you see he's trying to make a move but he used up all of his stuff trying to get around the 32 he would be the first driver to duck down pit lane we have made it to green flag pit stops which is a very good sign because by this time last year we were having a lot of issues at this track but these drivers a lot of them on their second round around here a lot of them on their third this is it's it's a good track if you know what to do and a lot of these drivers are veterans Race car, one of them, as he leads. Dust on another as he runs second right now as the pit stops cycled through. When that was all said and done, that's how they ran. Dust on would pass race car for the lead, but would not get credited with leading lap number 40. But he would put a huge gap on race car in a matter of two corners. He would lead a couple of laps, which is good for him because we've always been talking about how his uh, pit stop team has been stepping up. Another group of cars come down pit lane a lot. Not, not many of them are leaders, but the caution comes out, and that's why. Uh, so that's a couple. Of, most of the leaders stay out, but a lot of them do come in under caution. It was for debris, and uh, you saw there. It should be interesting to see. With First off, the leaders changed a lot of positions for those that did pit. It's going to be interesting to see you know, what the new tires versus old tires will do. One car off the lead lap being Gran Turismo 916 so mostly every lane open still because 916 still up to speed look at this three wide for the lead Susan Mia and that other Honda trying to make things happen then you got the Audi of Vetman 24 your pole sitter for the Daytona 400 he gets the lead right now and is trying to pull away from the field it's not too hard for the leader to do that but eventually they do get caught so it's kind of a timing deal because you see right there, a big lead on the field right now, probably close to a second. Take a look at the timing it's going. It is a second and a quarter. So uh, some change there. Now you got another three wide group. Look at how hectic things are and how these lines just work differently. This is something we're going to be looking at a lot. Last week's winner, Amaterasu, kind of mired back in all this. Haven't talked about her much at Watkins Glen where she won. First time we're talking about her today, you see the nuclear explosion ready to go off between the 7 and the 84 coat of course they are sisters and their rivalry is unbelievably heated the 60 car you saw some damage on the right side there his day goes from bad to worse he caught the wall somewhere around this racetrack it's not too it's not too hard to do that because if you run the outside line and just make a small mistake you'll be in the wall see davis leading again susan mia the teammate backing up right there in third so it's a uh uh, uh, Honda's again dominating there, but uh, Audi's trying to rain on their parade. Look at that close call there with the uh, 51 and the 80. Remember the last time that NASCAR fan had a close call? He ended up in victory lane. We'll see if that ends up being the case for him today. Lots of people really putting on great performances right now. You see two rookies leading and then the veteran. Wow! Boy, oh boy, that man was not wasting any time. Look at this. Davis tries to shut the door or at least try and spook the 15 car and that man was having none of it he oh trouble we got trouble guys the 12 of RCB your pole sitter around oh my gosh I don't know how he didn't get hit by more cars there but this is going to be three cars four five now six that's a oh boy that was a big hit for 916 caution is obviously out and maybe the red flag, because there's a lot of cars involved in that. Let's see what happened. Looks like the same thing that Davis tried to pull on uh, Vetman. It just didn't work, and it was at the quarter panel this time. And see, there goes RCB around. I don't know. Reshiram, amazing miss. Jordan, amazing miss. And look at all these guys missing it. NASCAR fan, I mean, gosh. 
Looks like shades of some of those drivers from the Daytona 400, and that is why those drivers that avoided it, all of those drivers that avoided it, I think a good four or five of them, are going to be given the web root moment of the race right there so far in this event. Could be something else that happens to change my mind, but as of right now, I think that's pretty impressive by everybody. How close can you get? Yeah, there are five cars on that outside line that got through. And uh, so there you see, there was a three-car breakaway for the lead, then two more. Crash happened about 12th or 15th, around the top 15. Boy, GT916, just unlucky. His day goes from terrible to awful, and then it goes from awful to just atrocious with that big hit, CUNY Kenosha nosing into the 60 car. Obviously, she couldn't help that. I don't think, uh, I think it'd be stupid to say that that violates her probation. That is just a case of nowhere to go. There's Fisher, gets involved, tries to go to the pit lane, and tags. Uh, yeah, that's Angel right there. So, doesn't look like there's too much damage to Angel's machine, just a little bit. See, same deal here for GT Racer 22, just barely noses into uh, his, uh, one of his close friends, GT916, and sends him off and up the track. Here's another angle. Watch this 60 Pennzoil car. Take a wild ride here. See the field going by. Everybody trying to avoid it. This is the later stage. Now watch CUNY. Nowhere to go because the 60 sliding down. That's a good four or five spins from the 60 in about a second and a half. Kind of concerns me because, uh, you know, we've seen some big crashes before. I mean, Patrick Shelter and the ARCA 200 comes to mind. Broke a vertebrae like that. But uh, the window net dropped on the 60, so he was able to body to move it around in there he would climb out under his own power notice that like five or six wide there with a matarasu splitting right up the middle gains a ton of spots out of everybody else's misfortune here I'm gonna ride on board with last week's winner watch this everything unfolding in front of her finds a line that works has the hole guns it plows through here making more passes they race back to the line and then immediately lets off the gas so the Cybertron here under caution. Now this is checking up for the caution. Something happened to somebody in front and it looks like Red Dragon just barely, nothing too serious, gives a bumper to the five. Not really any damage to either of them. It was a pretty significant bump, but there's not any damage to the drivers. So uh, looks like everybody's going to be okay there. That would bring out a brief red flag, but after the red flag was lifted, uh, the red flag for the crash, not for the bumping and shoving there. See everybody taken to the pit lane. And as they came out of the pits, this could be important because track position is just about everything. Here comes Davis out, vet man, side by side. I think Davis just barely got the nose there. I can't even tell who got out in third between Raven and Susan Mia. And you just, thank God we have timing and scoring because uh, that would be a mess to try and figure out by yourself. Taking a look at the field as they run right now on lap 63, nearing the halfway point, almost an hour into the race by now. See, uh, a lot of people we have not talked about today slowly moving their way up, and a lot of people we've talked about a lot slowly moving their way back. I don't know if it's commentator's cor curse or just the course of the race. See, we still have 37 cars running almost, I think every, sing yeah, every single car that is uh, retired up from this race so far was involved in that big crash and you can understand with all the oil that we had to clean up uh, there's gonna be some uh, issues uh, there of course that's why the red flag came out I'm we're believing that the big check up on the back stretch was because some drivers were told the red flag and interpreted that as now instead of going to be so we'll see about that and uh, take to Twitter because a lot of drivers were taking shots at each other after Watkins Glen it was Pretty entertaining if you weren't one of the team members. See the green flag out here. Getting the restart on lap 65. Onboard with Tire and Iron if you ever wanted to know what it looks like from the very back of this pack. See Angel there when it was involved in that accident. Keeping good pace. Saw somebody up there scrape the wall. Saw some sparks off the concrete. Already seeing some dirt and parts flying. You see Tire and Iron checks up big time because of this. Remember Amaterasu, who just made an amazing move, split in the middle, getting all kinds of positions. How about that save right there? And she holds on and actually gets positions out of it. 
So Amaterasu still impressing us all in the booth and in the stands and maybe even on the pit box. Two-car breakaway, Davis and Vetman. It seems if you're not a Toyota, Honda, or Audi, you really don't have a chance at this thing right now. Right now being the key word, we'll have to wait and see. The Chevys have been slowly lurking around there. You see a whole bunch of them right there. But, heck, guys, I mean, look at all the Hondas. They have come to win today, and Toyota really wants to win here. But, I mean, Japan's going to be walking away with a manufacturer victory, I think, uh, because of just the domination they've shown. Germany and the Audis, they've been sneaking their way up there a little bit, but we've been hearing some reports that engines might be a little iffy uh, in some of those cars, particularly the Harsk World Motorsport cars. We've seen it before uh, at a Harsk World Motorsport. Not an underfunded team, but just uh, maybe money has not been going in the right places. Doesn't look like there's any engine issues right now, though, because look at Harsk, team leader right there, throwing that car to the bottom, going to the front with the independent Audi, not teammate, right behind. Just goes to show how crazy it is. This is why I love this track. This is why a lot of drivers love it and a lot of fans, all the fans love it because there's such, you never know what's going to happen. You can throw it on the high side, make it work. You can throw it on the bottom, make it work. Some of the Sprint Cup guys run the apron and make it work. And heck, we saw Matarasu going into the grass through turn three and she passed three cars. So, I mean, whatever works, works. Another three wide for the lead here. Two Audis and Davis and the Honda and you see th two more Honda's right behind trying to uh, take advantage of that. Davis and Susan Mia are teammates. Uh, so obviously they're going to be trying to work up there. You, of course, SBX was up there earlier. Had the uh, trifecta of Hondas. And uh, of course you got um, Red Dragon trying to put on a good show here. She's been doing a good job in probably the fastest Toyota. Uh, because race car kind of fell off the map. Three wide again. I think uh, this is a recurring theme, but it's the two Hondas versus Red Dragon. Red Dragon definitely showing that she knows what she's doing. Uh, she has a couple of open wheel uh, victories here and there, and she's done a great job. And uh, she's more of a road racer and a dirt racer, but she's definitely showing she knows how to get around this two mile oval. Taking a look at the field right now at the halfway point. The run through on the top left. You see still 37 cars running and all 37 of them on the lead lap. Looking pretty good so far. And uh, most of the drivers are pretty happy with their cars, even if they are toward the back. Because uh, if you're on the lead lap, you kind of got a chance to win this thing. You might need a caution. It's not as easy to go up and down the field as it is at Daytona or Talladega, but... You get a good restart, and you got a good handling race car, get four fresh Eagles underneath you, you can definitely gain a ton of spots. We've already seen it today. So now, Honda, 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 Audi, Chevy, Chevy, Toyota. Sound like a broken record there saying Honda over and over. If you're wondering where in the world the Fords are, this is your top running Ford in 15th place, Swift Smith. See, now Davis dives in the pit lane on the end of lap 97, giving Russian Ram some breathing room. Russian Ram didn't really think coming into Daytona he'd do well, did fine, did great for a rookie at Daytona. Went to Watkins Glen, thought that that would be where the momentum stopped. He finished great there. Heck, he's top 10 in points. He's leading at the moment, and then he made his pit stops and whatnot. But, I mean, he's in the top five right now. He is showing some fantastic talent right now. And after the pit stop cycled out, he's still running in the top five. So here's Davis getting a little bit of a breakaway now on the B-Man, who I don't know where he came from, but all of a sudden he just shot that Team K Upton car right up there through pit stops. Great job by that pit crew and him getting on and off to uh, really – put Chevy back on the map in this race and there you see he's going to the front he's got that 77 car right behind that part timer I, I, you can't really, uh, he's a part timer by definition but he's ran all three races so far so we'll have to see uh, you know if Chevy can hold on to this thing right now race car, we talked about him earlier, fell off the face of the world he's currently the last car on the lead lap I think he realized the leaders were coming because you see him 
going by that uh, 69 of Jacques P22, although Jacques looks like he has a bit of an issue. Uh, unfortunate, because the same thing happened to him at Daytona. Just, it looks like, uh, wow, you look at that. Maybe thought that the 32 pinched the 25, which he definitely did. But uh, they're both trying to get into the pit lane, that's why. But uh, at first glance, it would have looked like a dirty move. But, I mean, hey, you got to get to the pit somehow. So now we got Quiet Girl out front. After uh, Amaterasu picked up a win, she's no longer the only female winner in the series. She's got to go and defend her title. She's looking to be the winningest female in GT Planet Fantasy Series. She's always going to be the first winner. But, uh, you know, that doesn't, doesn't mean she's going to stop trying. Here you see the caution out with the 77 and the 30 on the pit lane. So the caution would come out. And you'll see why. Believe, is that Reshiram? Oh, no it is. Reshiram and Vetman. Wow. So a couple of the front runners there. Have to see what happened. But a big break for the 77 and the 30 uh, if they timed it right. Looks like... Well, looks like rookie mistakes from both of them, and that's the same thing that uh, caused the big one at Daytona between the 05, and I believe it actually was the 15 that got tipped. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Uh, I probably am. It's been a while. It's been a couple weeks, but it just looks like the 15 wanted to go down, and the 05 just wanted to hold his line, maybe ill-handling race car. Not sure, but uh, they collide, and they're the only two to take each other out there, and they... Uh, the momentum would stop for the 05 car. You saw a couple of takers to pit lane. This could very well be the final pit stop. Green flag comes out with Quiet Girl on the lead. Then Harsk. Then Duststone. Then NASCAR fans. So a lot of guys uh, and girls in Chevys starting to move their way up there right now. But the Audis and Honda is still lurking around. You see SVX now the front running Honda. See all kinds of 4 Y. Now there's Harsk to the lead. And oh no, there goes the engine. We were talking about it earlier. Harsk World Motorsports and some of the Audis. Not a big concern, but something was to watch for those engines. And we just lost our first engine of the day with Harsk from the lead. He had just taken the lead. He didn't lead the lap, but he just had the edge on. And then the engine blew. Now Pontiac throws their hat into the ring leading a lap. That's a lap car in the number two. NASCAR fan up there still. I believe that is a uh, graphical error on the number nine. There's not damage to the rear end. His car is in good shape. It's a uh, just a graphical error, so don't mind that. Do mind, however, that lap traffic doing a good job all day today, getting out of the way and letting these leaders go, though it's kind of hard to be a back marker here with so many grooves to run. Taking a look at the side of the Axe x -Sight car. Axe x -Sight versus Victoria's Secret. And there goes GT Sport. So, uh, Whitetail not letting this thing go. He's not going to be denied today. He's got a great shot to win, and he's not going to be giving it up. And is that another engine lost? And it's the B-Man. And, oh, no, race car gets in the back of him. GT Racer 22 got a piece of that. And a blown engine loose in his own oil and loose in the oil behind him. Two cars that were very strong earlier today bring out the caution. And that's a darn shame. Nobody takes the pit lane out of the top 20. You're going to have to go really far back to find somebody who did take it into the pit lane. And uh, that was a car with damage. It's Reshiram. So if you're a fan of Reshiram, the rookie, he... Oh no, and now Samurai blows an engine. Are you kidding me? So now instead of Audi being the concern, it's now Chevy with the concern. Because that's two engines at about five laps. And uh, the, that's that's amazing, and that's a shame, though, for the 77, because uh, he doesn't know how many races he's running this year. So to have him drop out kind of sucks for that team, because uh, they're strong when they are racing. NASCAR fan you saw on the restart got a good jump, got down in front of that lap traffic. Did a good job of getting the jump, so he could jump down in front of that traffic, keep second, third on back. Wow, that was TBWHHS with a bold move. Whitetail there, nearly getting sideswiped. And now they're four wide, five wide, maybe thinking about it. But uh, definitely a lot of crazy racing here. But as NAS 
got that out that second on back area stuck on the outside it allowed him to get this big breakaway he had a two second gap now it's back to a one second gap i mean he's got a good run going right here he looks like he could be the second uh the first driver to win twice this uh this season he remember winning the daytona 400 could he win it today if he does that'd be great for his points bout he's got a gap of four excuse me three and a quarter seconds now you're gonna see however it's almost a whole second down in one lap did nass burn off all his tires there allowing quiet girl the advantage and don't count out clayton hardy either he's still got a good chance at this thing so you see it's either gonna be a two-time winner in the season a two-time female winner ever a first-time native american or first-time manufacturer win or Dustone <laughs> be his first oval win. So either way, there's going to be a big storyline if the top five stays the way it is. And Quiet Girl makes a move now on NASCAR fan. Nass stuck on that outside. He, maybe he did use his tires up, or maybe he's playing some mind games here. Who knows? But Quiet Girl with the lead right now. NASCAR fan drowning himself back a little bit in lap traffic. Not serious though. Quiet Girl will get caught up behind Jock P just a little bit, allowing NASCAR fan to come down to the bottom. Getting closer and closer to five to go. It's go time for sure. And these guys, well, this guy and girl are battling out hardcore right now. The 80 and the 87. And 80 something's going to be in victory lane because they put three seconds over Susan Mia, who's still holding on right now. But man, you thought Honda was going to win? You never even heard about Chevy being in the top five. And now two of the best Chevy drivers going head-to-head -head right now. NASCAR fan putting a big lead on Quiet Girl, coming to three to go. You see the gap? 1.73 seconds. And Quiet Girl's in the pit lane. So it wouldn't matter whether Nass had it or not. Quiet Girl with an issue, I'm assuming fuel, ducks down into the pit lane. Can't make it to the finish. Can NASCAR fan do it here? He's still good right now. But that doesn't mean a whole lot because they pit on the same lap. White flag. See Quiet Girl coming out of the pit lane. NASCAR fan. Is he saving gas? I guess not because he splits the lap cars. Two, three wide. He's through the middle there in the final lap. Boy, that could have been huge if he timed that wrong. But checkered flag going to be in the air. And NASCAR fan, 1,400. Well, you know what's going to happen here. He wins his second race of the season, despite the camera lag. And this is a big deal right here. All these cars in the pit lane, because they couldn't make it on fuel. NASCAR fan saves enough gas, gets there to finish, and so do all these guys. And boy, some big finishes here. I mean, you got Clayton Hardy on the podium. Michelin sneaking in for his first top five of the season. Durr winning, getting the TKU name up there. Whitetail, great finish for him getting Pontiac in the top 10. How about Angel rallying back after being involved in the big one, or I guess the big one there for 9th and Silverwing in 10th? That's all the uh, KANS cars that finished the race in the top 10. And uh, we had 33 cars finish this race, which is a pretty, it's a, it's a good trend for this season. I tell you what, we've not seen a whole lot of uh, finishers. We've not seen that many finishers last season. It was uh, If you got half the field to finish, that was an award. But we have had all the cars. I know I'm jinxing it so hard. But we've had every car stay on the ground this year. We've not had any rollovers, which is good three races in. And uh, we've had a lot of people finishing races, and that is good news for the sport. It means the talent's gone up. It means the etiquette's gone up. And it means the durability's gone up, too. Although a lot of engines lost three engines there after... We got into the final quarter of the race. So here's NASCAR fan pulling some donuts for the second time this season. He had one win last year on the restrictor plate, and this is his first race he's ever won in the GT Planet Fantasy Series that was not on the restrictor plate. Of course, he won his Gatorade duel in the Daytona 400 this year, and oh, he blew his engine too! So... If that doesn't tell you something uh, about Chevy engines, they're usually pretty tough, but you can't push them too far. You see Nash still trying to do some burnouts there. Not going to work when you've got smoke pouring out the engine there. But you see the triumphant 
drive into victory lane. It's in the infield here, so not too much hard work to get there. Hopefully that and that engine would last, wouldn't need a push. And there he is in victory lane, a triumphant win for the number 80. Lurked a lot in the back, but brought it home in victory lane for the second time this season. That is huge for his points standings. So uh, back to Web Root Moment of the Race, still definitely going to award that to those five drivers, including NASCAR fan. That's his second time he's won it this year. Uh, second in three races, actually, for the same reason. All those cars, it was either four or it was five or six of them that were on that outside line avoiding GT916, getting it bogged down, or just getting lucky. One way or the uh, one way or another, they got the Web Root Moment of the Race for today. And NASCAR fan sits in victory lane. Now another news story here. Um, Michelin Tires, of course, if you haven't heard yet, going to be hosting. Uh, well, it, hosting in terms of what tire compound. Their first ever race. It will be the first race in GT Planet Fantasy Series history that will not be with Goodyear Tires. Now, Goodyear is not being released or anything. They don't have a contract really at this point. Their contract is you may get released at any moment. And that's pretty much how it is for all these tire manufacturers. There's a good four or five of them that have their hat in the ring right now to try and be the lead uh, tire provider. However, while Goodyear has done pretty good so far this year in the three races they've had, that doesn't mean that they've locked in everything because there still needs to be chances for other guys to try and come in and see if they can't do a better job. If you haven't heard yet, and you'll probably see a picture on the screen right now, Special tire compound for the name change for the Texas race. It was going to be sponsored by Fur Affinity, uh, but it has changed to the hashtag Stop the Violence. So uh, in, in recognition of everything going on in the southern United States and all over the world uh, with, you know, just hate crimes and violence. And uh, me personally speaking, uh, I have no tolerance for that discrimination of any kind is unacceptable through my eyes and uh to go and take somebody's life for it is ridiculous so i think the name change is fitting i think it's uh it's good and i definitely commend michelin tires for what they've done to make that special tire and hopefully they put on a great show there in texas it should be a fun race the first night race of the season so uh, if you don't count the Bud Shootout, the first points race under the lights, it should be a fun one, of course. You can catch all that right here on this channel. You can catch all the news, all the angry tweets from last week. And uh, if there are any this week, you'll catch it all on the thread on gtplanet.net. Again, I'm NASCARFan1400. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I will see you all next time, live from Texas.